Okay, so this video is a speech that I sometimes give about imaginary numbers. Um, I think it's interesting. Maybe you'll find it interesting as well. Um, imaginary numbers. You're going to come across, when you learn about these numbers in school, uh, somebody in the classroom will inevitably ask, why do we have to learn about imaginary numbers if they're just imaginary? And they picture in their mind something like a fire-breathing dragon is imaginary and we don't care about that. So why do we care about imaginary numbers? Uh, the reality is, uh, imaginary numbers are no more imaginary than the other kinds of numbers. Um, when we look at something like the number 2, right? We write it on the board like this. Uh, this is not actually the number 2, right? The number 2 is uh, a concept. This is a numeral 2. It's no different than if you knew someone named Sean and you wrote Sean's name on the board. Is this Sean? No, this represents Sean. And two is what represents a concept that the human mind has created. In that sense, nobody was walking through a forest and they tripped over something and they're like, oh, what's this? And they pick it up. It's the number, I shall call this the number two. Right? No, nobody did that. Right? It's not like something that was discovered. In fact, some philosophers have said that without man, uh, mathematics wouldn't exist. So it's all from the mind of man meaning human. Okay? Uh, it's all from the mind of humans. So then, uh, where did imaginary numbers come from? What are their use? Uh, a long time ago, in a place called Math World, let's say, uh, people wanted solutions, or mathematicians wanted solutions to this equation. And so several of them began exploring, saying if x squared equals negative 1, then x will equal plus or minus the square root of negative 1. And they started working with these things. They weren't yet called imaginary numbers. Um, they just were solutions to equations like this one. So then, uh, some people in math world didn't like this. And they felt like, uh, we don't think this is a part of math. Um, Rene Descartes was one of them. Uh, Descartes is famous for a couple reasons, well, many reasons. Uh, one of them, he gave us the Cartesian plane. So whenever you graph something, uh, algebraic equation, uh, in the Cartesian plane, that's the xy coordinate plane. It's from him. Uh, he also coined the phrase, uh, I think, therefore I am. Of course, he didn't say it in English. He said it in Latin. Uh, but what, what he said about these numbers, he says, this is silly. Such numbers are just imaginary. So he meant it as a pejorative, as an attack on imaginary numbers. And the people who liked the numbers said, hey, that's pretty good. Let's call them imaginary numbers, and the name kind of stuck. So later, uh, somebody else would come along and say that the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. And i became the symbol for these imaginary numbers, which is pretty simple to extrapolate from imaginary. So uh, let's look at the history of numbers before imaginary numbers. Uh, we had just numbers. And there were two categories. There was irrational numbers and rational numbers. And that was it. Uh, rational was discovered first, of course. Uh, irrational came later. Um, at first, many people thought only rational numbers existed. Uh, one group of people who agreed with this thinking was a Pythagoreans. Um, it turns out that the person who proved, or one of the people who first proved that irrational numbers existed was Hippasus. And uh, as legend or story goes, he was on a boat and they, he showed them that numbers were irrational and they threw him overboard and killed him. Uh, great reward for discovery of irrational numbers, right? I guess the people who did it weren't very rational. Uh, anyhow, Underneath rational, there were several categories of numbers. Um, rational had uh, you know, normal rational, and then within it was integers. And integers are you know, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, then underneath integers were whole numbers, which cut off the integers at 0 and only went one direction. Um, then underneath whole numbers were the natural numbers, and the natural numbers were simply the positive integers. Why are they called natural numbers? 
It's because when we think about counting, which is where we originated math in the first place, uh, we didn't start counting with, I have zero markers in my hand. No, the first number we would say is one or this many, right? And then we said two and then three. And so the natural numbers are if you count naturally, this is what you will get. Uh, I like to think of whole numbers as having a whole. Uh, if you draw a picture of a whole, it looks like a zero. So easy way to memorize that. So if these were numbers, this was all that math world thought existed. And people came along and said, we wanted these numbers. Again, we talked about it. These are the imaginary numbers. But this made a further clarification possible. If imaginary numbers, which will be a plus bi, where b does not equal zero, if those are imaginary numbers, then what are these numbers going to be called? Well, it's easy. What's the opposite of imaginary? Well, then it would be the real numbers. And so up to this point, when you gave an answer to a question like no real solution, the reason for it is because the existence of imaginary numbers made us be able to clarify that these numbers, which we formerly all we knew, are actually just a set of something called the real numbers. And both of these are part of a bigger set called the complex numbers. So the complex numbers are also a plus bi, but in these ones, b can be 0, whereas in imaginary numbers, they cannot. Uh, the real numbers are a plus bi as well, incidentally, but b does equal 0 in this case. Uh, imaginary numbers has a further classification of pure imaginary numbers. These are a plus bi, where a is equal to 0 and b does not equal 0. And so that's it. That's where imaginary numbers came from. Uh, people who ask, you know, that they think they're useless or something, they have many applications in the real world, uh, the most common of which is AC current. Uh, it uses imaginary numbers in the calculation of such things. Um, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed.